Hi, this is Brian with Cairo. Today I want to recap a couple of things we learned last year as far as the suboccipital muscles. And then I want to build on something that just came out recently this year uh, and how that's affected my practice uh, over the last couple of weeks. And the first thing I want to cover is a shout out to one of my classmates, uh, Dr. Frank Scully. And he was one of the first people to discover a mild dural bridge in the suboccipital muscles. And what we've seen from Spine is that there's 26 other journals uh, that was published last year that also uh, show that mild dural bridge, whether it's the rectus capitis, posterior minor and major, and the obliquus inferior, is they all have mild dural bridges. And that active tensioning of those muscles, uh, whether it's just normal physiological movement or if that's changed after an injury can have profound impacts on the dura. Most of the time we're going to see that as far as dural tension signs and then also headaches. Uh, so those kind of things are important to, to understand that linkage, but also American Journal of Neuroradiology last year put out a great study showing that patients with mild traumatic brain injury who've gone through any kind of a whiplash injury have a change in tone of those muscles. And that change in tone, that hypertonicity in those muscles will delay outcomes and also increase symptom severity. So it's important to know that we, uh, we need to address those muscles. Now, we all know that suboccipitals are involved in tension headaches, and one of the things that I use is a PIR, other suboccipitals, to help with those symptoms. So I'm going to show that really fast. So I'm going to have the patient uh, in, a, in a supine position, and I'm going to have my hand right over their forehead, and when I tell them to look up and to nod their head up, they're going to activate those suboccipital muscles. So we'll have her gently nod up and look up, and she's gonna hold that for about seven seconds, and then I'll have her relax, and I'll slowly uh, distract the spine, and then bring her chin into a little retraction to get some extra stretch out of those suboccipitals, and then once again, look up, push up, She's gonna hold for seven seconds and then relax and I can slowly pull out and retract her chin even further. I can further the stretch on any kind of uh, suboccipitals by going to the right and to the left and you know, continuing on that PIR. But one thing that's interesting that I just learned that I'm, I'm really excited about, I just started performing about two or three weeks ago, uh, was in uh, Archives of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation this year. And they said with patients with tension type headaches and also patients with uh, those chronic headaches, Headaches, is that if you add in a nerve floss into that same PIR, you can get better results. So let's show you how to do that. So I'm going to start with the patient having uh, less tension on the spinal cord and dura. So she's going to keep her hands up like this. And then when I want her to tension the spinal cord and the dura, I'm going to have her bring her arms into that uh, upper nerve uh, tension test where she's going to bring her arms down into extension. She's going to have her wrists extended and fingers extended to pull a lot of tension on that, that, that cord. So she's going to bring her arms back up. So she's released the tension uh, distal to the side of the suboccipitals. So when she does that, I can tension the suboccipitals from above. So I'll have her push up and look up. She's doing that for seven seconds. And then I'm going to have her relax. And now she's going to bring her arms down. And then come back up. And come back up. And then relax her head. And I'm going to pull from up and then she's gonna bring her arms down, I'll release the tension from above, and then bring the arms back up, and I'm gonna put the tension back up from above, and then keep on going. And I'll do this for maybe three to 10 uh, repetitions, and it's a nice, gentle, passive range of motion, and uh, if you get any kind of ridiculous symptoms with this and come back up, then you want to discontinue or not go quite as far because you are going to be putting tension on those nerves. Uh, just something I learned recently in the literature. I hope you'll start to incorporate things like these in your practice, and thanks for watching.